It's been a while since I've built a hypermiler. This one I plan to build is gonna get very ridiculous. I'm going to be building the highest MPG vehicle in the game as a version 4.2.4.2 that's game breaking, underpowered, and completely pointless to drive. Hey guys, it's Trice here, and let's get on with our build with this POP50 looking ass body. So the panel material, it's gonna be lightweight as possible for this particular build, so carbon fiber for the panel material, monocoque chassis, also be added carbon fiber for the chassis material. And I believe we have to use a front launch tutorial because this pretty much is the only working engine configuration for this mod body. And a front suspension, McPherson strut because the light one is possible, the lightest. And interesting, push rods for the rear suspension. And we are on the ground. <laughs> And of course, for the engine build, body build, and everything, plus 15 for the quality. And for the engine, it's gonna be an inline 3 made out of a magnesium with the bore and stroke each set to the smallest as possible. So the bore at 50 millimeters, the stroke at 40 millimeters to get the family engine size to 236 cubic centimeters. Running on a dual red cam 5 valve, an aluminum silicon for the head material, and plus 15 again. And for the variant capacity, we're going to be lowering this bad boy yet again, so the bore will be at 45 millimeters, and the stroke down to 28 millimeters to get the true engine size of 134 cubic centimeters. And the crit car, it's pissed the rest of the bottom end, built steel with a lightweight titanium car rods, and it's kind of interesting. Do lightweight forged pistons, but for normal, like, hyperbower builds, like in the past, you used to choose, like, the hyper utility cast, but it seems like in the test build, lightweight forge is the best, as this improves it by like a few more MPG, and balance of mass, who needs that anyways. I know the compression was set to a very high level by test engine builds, so let's just... Let's just leave it here for now, and the camp profile and springs and lifters, I know I have to lower these soon. And the RPM load, it's kind of a game breaker, it's kind of funny. Drop this down, all the way down to 2000 RPM. And the turbocharger, I might as well put a turbocharger because this did improve the MPG rating, so I'll try it out a little bit soon. And a fuel system, direct injection, throttle per cylinder, race intake, because it's a light one as light as possible. And the type of fuel, let's go over here. So the type of fuel we're using is compressed gas, which is liquid natural gas or something. Uh, liquefied natural gas, so well, close enough. And lastly for the headers, so I think I chose tubular long headers, I believe, with the exhaust size to just a half of inch, or 12.7 millimeters. No cats, no mufflers, and where are we at right now? Well, 3.4 horsepower and 9 pounds feet of torque with an engine efficiency rating of around 25.5%. We can do better than that, but I have to build the car first to get the MPG rating. So the drive type, longitudinal front wheel drive, let's start off right now. With a manual 2 speed, with the top speed, lower it to a very small amount. 19 miles an hour. That is terrible for a car. It's pretty much a street legal golf car or something. <laughs> So the tires, let's start off with cross-ply hard long-life tires because this will forcefully, yes, apply some 45 millimeter wide tires. I mean, just looking at these, these are like literal bicycle tires in terms of the width. Like a fat bike tire or something. And copper fiber rims, and for the brakes, let's choose the carbon ceramic single piston and lower the size to 160 millimeters for each. Same thing carbon ceramic one piston because these are the lightest brakes in the game. And for the under tray, I think I used a race diffuser, but let's start off with a none for now, and no no cooling airflow whatsoever. And for the interior of this car, seeing that the two basic reduced size seats are the lightest ones compared to just the single full size seat, let's just use this uh, reduced side seats and just wing with it with this narrow ass car with a basic interior and no entertainment whatsoever. And for the driver, it's safety aids, a wreck of type of steering, no ABS brakes, no, no track shades whatsoever, with no safety standards whatsoever. And this is pretty much for automation numbers, make the car optimized to be lightweight as possible. Stricter for automation, this won't work for BMG Drive, unfortunately. Maybe the future to probably implement this slider, as well as the weight distribution slider, for like the 4.3 update, just coming out like really soon. And springs, standard, 22 dampers, pass the sway bars, start from normal preset with the sway bars removed to reduce as much weight as possible. And up to quality, and the MPG rating we got as of right now is 936.7 miles per gallon. That's just right now if I'll do a bunch of the tuning with the engine, which is pretty much going to be the forefront for this video, is just getting the stuff with the engine. And I think by mashing the body, if I'm correct, just bash this. Was it this body? 
Ah, it's to peel small body, so now we improve it to 981 miles per gallon by just mashing the body and choosing the right one. How about the top speed? A little better. Now back on the engine, I believe I just dropped the cam profile significantly to improve the engine efficiency. Yes, 28%, which should... Why did it show 1100 miles per gallon? Okay, we're at 10 or 1003 miles per gallon. I think the springs to the lifters too. What's funny, yes, we are improving power and torque by just dropping the springs to the lifters and the cam profile too, and we're at 1165 right now. Uh, compression improved it by 130 almost. God dang. Okay, so let's add a turbocharger. Let's try to sell. So the turbocharger, of course, backs up the quality, and I believe I made this, like, small as humanly possible with, like, no boost. I say no boost, but the AR compressor trim just dropped this down to a zero. All right, it's looking bad at the moment. Like, no intercooler? I think so. So smart boost system. So we're at 1239. If I make this naturally aspirate, was that 30? No, this is worse now. So a turbocharger is good for this car. Now we're up to 13 all of a sudden. What if we go back to Datchery Aspirated? So 1230 there with a turbocharger. This is by a waste skate. 1300 miles per gallon. So after tuning up the engine the best I can, especially with the turbocharger, I get the final power rating of right here of 4.6 horsepower at 2000 RPM and a torque rating of 12 pounds feet of torque at 2000 RPM. So as of right now, about 1200 miles per gallon as of right now because of this tune of an engine, the engine efficiency rating of 35.1% of just turbocharging this thing. What if I were to get rid of turbocharger? What will this improve to? Well, decrease to around 34.3% with it being turbocharged up to 35, which is interesting. So anyways, let's see what this low ripping engine sounds right here. That sounds pretty depressing because of the red line given at 2000 RPM. And for the heck of it, back to the car. What if I were to choose some radial tires for the tire build? Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, we're at 1,356.5 miles per gallon. Hmm. I don't know what else I can improve this because I tried putting some like smaller tires and it significantly drops the miles per gallon rating, the MPG rating. But it seems like you're gonna hit like the sweet spot just to get the right amount of MPG running increases, but not decreases significantly. As we can see, improving the tire diameter, we're dropping the MPG rating significantly, and now it increased to 1330. Well, I don't think I could seem to improve the MPG rating, so I believe I'll call this final for this modded body, this one be peel body, of an MPG rating of 1,356.5 miles per gallon. So, anyways, despite my best efforts to be trying to improve the rating, Let's design the car as is in a time lapse video of trying not to look like a Peel P50 body as I made like a couple Peel P50 designs in the past, like one with the lightest car, like over a year, a couple years ago, and somewhat similar, like under my Mr. Jack and Triple Zero days. So anyways, let's start the time lapse of this not so Peel P50 design right now. So for the design of this car, the design process took me about 30 minutes. That's because of how simple and small this car body is. For the front, I slapped on a pair of semicircular headlights and turn indicators to make it not look like a PLP-50. Along with adding a plastic border that meets up with the headlights, this fixture also houses a small cutout for the grille, which is transparent, so you can see the engine from the front and be amazed at how small and fuel efficient it is. Lastly, I added a single wiper blade that's mounted near the top of the windshield. The side of the car isn't interesting to explain. I only added some basic door handles and a gas door. For the back, I used some custom taillights to add the brake lights, reverse lights, and turn signals. I also added the branding and car name to the front and back of the car. Next, I thought about adding some body molding to the rear end, but it wasn't going to work out with this car and the fixtures provided with the body molding and all that stuff. Same thing with the interior in a way, as I wanted to build, like add a basic interior, but with the body size, the suspension, and fixtures poking through the car body, I scrapped the interior design, even though I wanted to build one for this car. Finally, I repainted the car to a dark, 
forest green color to give it that ecological look. So after getting everything done with this build, here's how it came out. This is the 2020 Jank JC13. This turbocharged hypermiler is possibly the highest MPG rating as a version 4.2.42, with a low top speed and a fuel efficient engine. Will it live up to what automation calculated for Beam and G as I test it to see if it is indeed a true hypermiler? Alrighty, so finally I got the Jank JC13 Hypermiler built up in here weighing almost 300 pounds and has an MPG rating at over 1300 miles per gallon. So anyways, before we export this car to Beam and G Drive, despite a handful, a big handful of problems here, such as the low engine cooling factor, the car is bottoming out, the rolling angle being too high, some quality issues, the short gain reduced the car's top speed, the front damper is being too hard, the low capacity for the cargo's volume, the engine's out of power, the current station of running engine is quite narrow, the engine has some unutilized octane, the front and rear tires being quite narrow, and the car issues with some wheel spin, and the clearance of the issue is getting narrow. Let's jump on over to Beam and G Drive to see if this hypermiler drives and works and all that stuff. Ah, uh, you know what? See that this car weighs like 300 pounds. Like, for example, if I slow this down to like 200 times slow-mo and unfreeze physics, you'll see the car turn into a nuclear explosion. <laughs> well, let me make some adjustments and re-export this car. Okay, now the car seems to work. I changed up to a fiberglass kind of panel material, and it seems like the car wants to cave in. Same thing with the wheel also. And seeing that we're out here, yeah, this is gonna get me. I might as well measure the MPG of this car, but instead of just doing it on a full fuel tank, let's see how long it takes, like, where's the fuel? Let's see how long it takes for it to run on a single liter of fuel. So the maximum capacity tank is 15 liters. Screw that, it's one liters now. So I got the MPG counter measuring at US miles per gallon and a stopwatch. So the moment I hit the gas pedal, we'll measure our time. So it's starting three, Two, one, go. And I'll probably just speed this up because it'll take very, a very long time just to run out of fuel. See, 20 miles an hour, and <laughs> it is what it is. What if I just go to cruise control at 19 and just leave it there? Over 100 miles per gallon, 130, and climbing of a range of 40 miles and counting. Interesting. So we're currently at a mile right now, and in terms of the fuel consumption, like the MPG rating and the range, it's hardly improving as of right now, but our fuel used is still at zero gallons, of an MPG rating at over 306 miles per gallon, and a range of just about a little over 80 miles of three and a half minutes. So I'm guessing when we run out of fuel, it'll probably take me to like 10, 20 minutes or even more, so stand by. Okay, so five minutes in, we used 100th of a gallon, 316 MPG, 82 miles of range, 1.6 miles. If I have to do the bath here, um, let me try to calculate this to how, like, how long does it take to run out of fuel at four gallons of five minutes. So asking ChatGPT for my advice for a frickin' math question, seeing it took five minutes to burn a oh, hundredth of a gallon of fuel out of this four gallon fuel tank, according to ChatGPT, the calculations, it should take 2,000 minutes to burn out a 4-gallon fuel tank with this car at 5 minutes per 100th gallon to burn. Which, dividing 2,000 minutes to 60, convert from minutes to hours, it'll take 33.33 hours, which is over a day, to burn this fuel tank. Seeing that I don't have this type of time to do stuff like this to test it out, let's do a time trial run right this instant. So here we are with the beers exploded with this weird ass kind of abomination that we got going here. And we're at the map of the industrial site and the time trial I got loaded up is the mixed perimeter circuit, I believe. Which we'll be doing two laps around the gravel and asphalt portions of this here racetrack. So it's great to start things off here in three, two, one impact detected stopping car because as you see in the bottom, the hazards are going off and top speed. <laughs> We got a little bump there, so it gives you um, pretty much a exposure to this kind of abuse that it'll handle. So here's the gravel. First checkpoint, almost 14 seconds. Here's an uphill. We'll go up the uphill with three pounds of boost. No problem whatsoever. Nice. Unlike my other crappy car builds, it's like most of the time, dirt. <laughs> we had some freaking mud there. Nice. 
It seems like most of my car builds that are like around this speed, they never reach its top speed, or they do, it's probably like maybe like 5 or 10 miles an hour, and the engine explodes once it reaches top speed, or you upshift the car. So it says here we got over 7, I'm pushing 700 miles of range, is it gonna hit 700 here? It's one two of an MPG rating of 175, it hit a 700 right there, 701. As I'm kind of thinking about this time trial, seeing how slow this car is, I probably should have done one lap rather than the default two laps around this circuit. Seeing that our average top speed is like the top speed, 20 miles an hour. Okay, he's a first lapper, so let's see the first lap time. First lap is a 1 minute, 51 seconds, 302 milliseconds. There's probably a good chance we get a 150 because of our start, but let's find out. So here's the final checkpoint, so about 200 MPG, 780 and counting range that we got here, 100 for a gallon use, 1.2 miles of a time, 1 minute 48 seconds, 665 milliseconds, almost the devil's number, of a total time of almost a 340 of 3 minutes, 39 seconds, 967 milliseconds. Well, not too bad of a second lap because, well, we were going very slow, through those twisty turns, I didn't have to brake whatsoever. So anyways, go to free roam and crash into something, right now. Infinity range, and our MPG is even poor. Same thing for our range, and our travel distance, our fuel used. Well, we haven't used fuel just yet. Please, can I crash into something? How about you, Mr. Fence? I want to crash this car. You're welcome. So anyways, for the final part of the video, let's drop this bad boy at a very, very high speed with the brand new, but a paid mod of the Car Jump Arena, the 2023 update, where we got a much bigger map, and a bigger ramp, and a lot of other things with this new mod that is still under development. So anyways, let's take you to the top of this newly, soon to be newly card chip arena map right now. So here we are at the top of the Car Jump Arena, the 2023 version of this paid mod, like I said. And also the link to download this mod and even pay to the mod author is down in the description below if you want to download this map and pay for yourself. So seeing we don't got the old 1 light, 2 light, 3 light, 4 light, 5 light, like the original card chip arena map, and then go and do some black magic and drop down the ramp. Let's just go because we got the green lights on the little markers right there. So here we go, starting our descent on our ramp. There goes the over revving part, beyond 3000 RPM, wait for the over rev risk to kick in. Let's see what the speed we get until we get the little thing to uh, pop up. Not only that, our MPG rating is going through the roof. 500 MPG, 600 MPG, about 3,000 miles. That's cross country. And 106 miles an hour. 65 meters was our launch, and we didn't get the over rev risk whatsoever. So brake damage, tire is broken. We're flipping over. We're on our side over 117 ish miles an hour. Oil starvation, engine start of oil. On our side still. Please land on our wheels. Nope, we're gonna go into sand and land our wheels by going into the sand. And there's a flashing yellow light. Is that a caution? Hold on, what's it say? Yellow flag. <laughs> because I'm right there or what? So the engine is still kind of starving of oil like it wants to and doesn't want to. The back end is still kind of intact with our hazards, our um, technically turn signals, brake lights, and reverse lights all in line. And the side, especially the right side, how it got a lot of exposure on the ground, grinding on the ground like that, the asphalt, still pulsing, left side is still pulsing, and the front seems okay-ish. So the Jank JC-13, aka the Hypermire of over 1300 MPG according to automation, well, it is indeed a Hypermire because after driving it in BMG, I managed to get over 300 MPG and it can burn the 4 gallon fuel tank in over 33 hours. With this car, I believe this is the highest MPG rating as of version 4.2.42 after the recent engine designer update with the smaller engines and different fuel types. To summarize this car, it's a slow, fuel-efficient microcar that hardly serves any purpose other than burning the least amount of fuel as possible. So anyways, that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.